We are back in the war room and now we are talking about defending your case. And this information is going to be helpful even if you plan on settling, we can potentially lower that settlement amount and then lessen the non-money settlement terms. Before I get into the different blocks on the whiteboard, let's talk about a, a reoccurring theme. The better you understand material accessibility and the web content accessibility guidelines, the better you will be able to defend your case. All too often, defense attorneys aren't aware of accessibility and it comes back to hurt them in negotiations. So when you have information, it will be you will be able to leverage that information to your favor. So let's start off with accessibility issues. Plaintiffs lawyers love to construe technical nonconformance with the web content accessibility guidelines against website owners, but you must bring the conversation back in line with reality. The reality is the standard under the Americans with Disabilities Act is meaningful access. Is your website meaningfully accessible? And at that point, it is imperative to know the actual accessibility issues and what their implications are. Um, another block here is many, I have many issues. So plaintiff's lawyers like to paint a story. And so if you have several issues on your website, they will paint the story as if your website is wholly inaccessible. And of course, you are purposefully, intentionally discriminating against people with disabilities. But my question is, well, what are the issues? And that leads to the next block. There are many plaintiff's lawyers that deal in generalities. We want to bring the conversation back into specifics. So plaintiff's lawyers, I often group them in a bucket, but they are quite different from one another. Some are more thorough in their approach and others are moving as fast as they can um, and really initiating as much litigation as they can. So they deal in generalities. And again, we want to bring the conversation back into specifics because if we have specifics and if we are aware of material accessibility, then we can better defend our case. Um, and then another uh, block I have here is overlay widgets bad. Do not install an overlay widget on your website because this can be used against you in multiple ways. Um, so if you have an overlay widget, I highly recommend uninstalling it and removing it altogether. Uh, because if you have an overlay widget, the plaintiff's lawyers can really um, take this and run with it. And so I recommend removing it all together and overlay widgets don't make your website accessible there are many website owners that really cling to overlay widgets they feel like they're a stopgap where there's some kind of temporary accessibility solution and they're nothing of the kind they don't make your website accessible they don't make your website ada compliant and they have been proven not to stop lawsuits there have been literally hundreds of lawsuits that have been filed despite the fact that websites had overlay widgets installed. So don't use them, don't have them installed. They can potentially be used against you. All right, also, um, conversely, do have an accessibility statement. And it depends on what stage you are in, um, in accessibility as to how detailed I would make the accessibility statement, but you want to have one. And I have a template for an accessibility statement available on accessible.org. Uh, with this template, uh, I, have I have really made it thorough and exhaustive so that you can take what sections you feel you want to include in your accessibility statement right now and then uh, fill in the template and then have that as your accessibility temp uh, as your accessibility statement. Now, there are some considerations. Uh, your attorney might have input on strategy here, uh, but regardless of whether you use the template, which I will link to in the description, you need to have an accessibility statement because think of it this way. Um, it doesn't necessarily help you to have an accessibility statement, but it can hurt you not to have one. That is the best way to think about it. Um, but there can be practical benefit in that someone visits your website. Um, and if they are, uh, if they do need support, if they do need assistance, if they would like to provide feedback, then you have this accessibility statement where someone can contact you. Also with an accessibility statement, you can, 
you can disclaim that there are certain aspects that may have accessibility issues and then talk about those and then talk about a workaround so that nobody gets stuck while using your website. So there is some practical benefit. It is a best practice uh, for ADA compliance. So I highly recommend that you have an accessibility statement. What you include on your accessibility statement is going to depend on you and your situation. Um, but that's where I'll leave that. Now, another block I have here is third-party embeds. If you have a, a third-party integration on your website, just know that that can create accessibility issues in and of itself, and you're not going to be able to blame the third party because you are ultimately responsible for your website. So if you get sued, you're not going to be able to tell the plaintiff's lawyer, well, we had a, a, a plugin or an embed or uh, we have some kind of software installed. That's not going to work. So be aware of the technology that you are relying upon. And then the last block I have here is fix the top issues claimed. If you fix these top issues that are most commonly claimed, as you, as you fix more and more issues, you are going to make your website more and more unattractive to plaintiff's law firms. And you are also going to improve your ability to defend a case were a plaintiff's law firm to sue you. So fix these top issues. And I will tell you the top three. They are missing alternative text or anything to do with alternative text. They are missing programmatic form field labels. And then they, there is a lack of keyboard navigability. That is the third issue. There are 15 issues that are most commonly claimed in litigation. Um, these issues are the basis of my ADA compliance course that will tell you how to find and fix all of the top issues, um, how to prioritize these issues, and then it will also provide you general strategy as you are making your website ADA compliant and working towards WCAG conformance, which is a best practice. But again, that is not the standard under the ADA. Um, so in this third column, I have a, a few notes. What are the issues being claimed? Here, again, we are back to specifics. We need to know exactly what is being claimed against us because we don't want a plaintiff's lawyer to get away with making some broad general claims and we don't even know if they are true or not. Sometimes these claims are actually templated. They're not even being specific to your website. They haven't even put in that effort. Now, that is the exception rather than the rule, but this is why it is so important to understand the specifics, understand accessibility, and understand this current legal landscape. You also need to take a strategic approach. And I have not talked about everything. The reason I don't talk about everything on this channel is because if I provide all of the strategy, then the plaintiff's lawyers will adjust what they're doing. And we don't want that. We want to better, want to, we want to be able to better defend these cases. So I don't talk about everything, but there is definitely a strategic component to this that I have not discussed in these blocks. And so for that reason, if you need consultation, I offer consultation, I will include a link to booking consultation in the description. Also, what I have here, reduce the number of issues. If you have let's say dozens of accessibility issues or even hundreds of issues on your website, it's going to look really bad. But if we can bring those issues down, even if you do have um, a handful of outstanding issues, you can better defend your case. So in this case, it's not an all or nothing. It's not WCAG conformance or nothing. We can make sure that we have a defensible case that our website is meaningfully accessible. And that gets to my next point, which is user testing. User testing is where we have a professional with one or more disabilities who is using assistive technology, typically a screen reader, and this professional is going through your website and relaying their practical, uh, their, their practical experience. I can provide through, through accessible.org, we offer user testing, but it's not just the user testing. You get a recorded session of the tester going through your website. And if the tester is saying, that the website is mostly usable, mostly accessible, and that the issues are minor. This is a great counter to any plaintiff's law firm stating that your website um, isn't meaningfully accessible and does have a barrier to access. So we can counteract um, the, the evidence proffered by the plaintiff's law firm with our own evidence. And so with user testing, this can really help in defending your case. But again, 
we want to know what is the actual state of your website. If your website has a lot of accessibility issues and there are barriers to access, the defense is going to be weak and we're going to want to lean towards settling. All right, so at adacompliance.net, I offer the ADA compliance course. This course covers those top 15 issues that I talked about. So I will link to this course in the description. I also offer audit remediation and user testing services through accessible.org. So if you need accessibility services, then uh, I offer those at accessible.org and we can help you with that. But I highly recommend if you are, if you are defending against one of these cases, even if you have a great attorney, if you consult with me, there are likely strategic components to your case that can be leveraged for gain, that can be leveraged to potentially uh, reduce your settlement amount, to, re to lessen the, the non-money settlement terms, or to potentially get your case dismissed. But we need to look at what is in front of us. And so obviously every situation is specific to you, uh, but given that there are a number of ways that we can help you in defending your case. So keep that in mind, just because you are sued, all hope is not lost. You just have to understand what you are being sued over and what the actual claims are. So when we get into this, to specifics, it may indeed be bad for you. You may indeed have barriers to access, but maybe you don't. I have talked to many clients where we go through the issues and we find any number of issues are either do not exist on the website, um, are not applicable because they are not WCAG success criterion. And if they're not WCAG success criteria, then the plaintiff's lawyers are going beyond even the technical standards. And, and we want to, again, we want to reel them in and bring them in aligned, uh, bring them back into reality. And how do we do that? You know, we have to frame this and we have to defend, you have to actually defend against this. You defend with information. And right now there are so many defense attorneys that don't know the technical aspects of accessibility. And if they did, they could better defend their clients. And that is where I could come into play. Um, we can have a consultation session with you and your attorney and w work through either the, the demand letter that was sent and or the complaint that was filed and work towards creating a defense and really um, putting, putting the plaintiff's lawyer back on the defensive. And there is definitely a strategic com um, component to this. I'm not going to get into that now, but I will link to all of the resources that I have mentioned in the description. But as it stands, you may have a better defense than you're aware of.